Hello everyone, this is Mr. Wong. I'm going to go ahead and give a first attempt at the 2024 AP Computer Science A FRQ questions. Now this just came out and today during class my students asked me, well they challenged me to see if I could solve these questions. So here's my attempt at solving these questions. Let's go ahead and look at question one. Question one is always going to be about methods and control structures. This one talks about a bird feeder. We have a class called feeder. Uh, we have one instance variable called current food and two methods that it looks like I'll have to write. So for, for part A, it looks like I'm going to be writing the simulate one day method. And it simulates num birds, birds. And it looks like that num birds right there uh, is the parameter over here. Or a bear could be visiting. So the method determines the amount of food taken from the feeder and updates the current food instance variable. And it looks like 95% of the time we have normal conditions and abnormal conditions occur 5% of the time. So we know how to generate this random probability, right? We always use math.random in APCSA. So that's going to be math.random. Now, under normal conditions, which occur 95% of the time, only birds visit and they eat between 10 and 50 grams of food, um, including 10 and including 50. So it looks like I had to generate another random value. And once again, we know to use math at random to generate those random values. And that's the amount of food one bird eats. It looks like I had to multiply that value by the number of birds. So if 10 birds eat, we multiply the number of uh, food one bird eats by the total number of birds to get the total amount consumed. If the total amount consumed is greater than the amount of food in the feeder, then we just set the amount of food to zero, current food. And under abnormal conditions, a bear empties the feeder and the amount of food at the end of the day is zero. And here you go, we are gonna try to complete the simulate one day method. Now, let's go ahead and rewrite that public void simulate one day. So public void simulate one day and the parameter is int numbers. All right. So uh, just thinking out loud, I have an instance variable called current food and it holds the total amount of food that we currently have. 95% of the time, we have a normal day, only birds eat, we have to generate this random number. Abnormally, a bear eats, and we just set the current food to zero. So let's go ahead, and it seems like we have to generate two random numbers. One to determine if it's a normal or abnormal day, the other to determine the total amount of food eaten. So first thing, I'm gonna generate a random number. Double, um, I don't know, chance of normal, normal chance. And that's going to be a math.random. Now math.random returns a random value between 0 and 1, including 0, not including 1. So if I want to simulate a 95% probability, then if normal chance is less than 0 0.95, Right, because math at random uniformly returns the value between zero and one, then if it's less than 0.95, that's the same thing as a 95% chance. So this is going to be the normal day. Else we have a abnormal day. Okay. And I think the abnormal day is easier because all we need to do is a bear eats all the food. I don't know if a bear eats bird food, but um, it eats all the food, and we set the current food to zero. Now we know it's a void method, so we don't need to return anything. So we have the abnormal day. Let's go ahead and do the normal day. So in the normal day, I need to simulate or calculate how much one bird would eat. So I'm going to create a variable. Um, one eaten, one bird eaten. Let's call it single bird. 
and that's going to be a random value. Now, math.random returns a random value between 0 and 1, including 0, not including 1. But I need to transform this into something between 40, or sorry, 10 and 50, including 10, including 50, and an integer. So let's go ahead and try some things. Let's try multiplying by 40. So multiply both sides by 40. That's not quite right. Kind of looks right. So this will give me 10, 50. And if I cast it, then this gets me 10, 11, 49, right? Because we don't include 50. Now this almost, look, almost looks right. We need 10, 11, 12, yada, yada, 50. But we only go up to 49. So I'm going to go ahead and increase that range by 1. That would get me to 41. Add 10, that would get me to 51. And that would get me to 50. Awesome. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I did was multiply by 41. Then I added 10. And then I cast that. Let's go ahead and move this a little bit out of the way. I cast that as int. And that should give me a number between 10 and 50 as an integer, one integer increments, um, 10 and 50, including both ends. All right, now that I have the amount of food a single bird eats, let's go ahead and calculate the amount of food all birds eat. Uh, integer times integer should give me an integer, so total birds, and that's going to be numbers the number of birds we have, times the amount a single bird eats. I might call it total eaten. I'm just going to call it total birds. Well, now let's call it total eaten. Total eaten. Food eaten, maybe. Food eaten. Okay. Uh, semicolons, semicolons. All right, so that is the total amount of food eaten. Now I need to subtract that from the current amount of food. Oh, but wait, um, if we need to eat more food than there is current food, I don't want to make this current food negative. It should be zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a math.max. And I'm going to get the higher result. It's either going to be zero or there's going to be some leftover food. So that's going to be current food minus the food eaten. So if there is leftover food, then current food is just however much is left. Otherwise, if food eaten is greater than current food, then this thing underlined in blue would be a negative number, and math.max would return zero. And so current food would be zero. All right, I think this is part A. Uh, if I want to really double check, I would go ahead and run my code through these examples right here. But I think I'm happy with part A. All right, let's go ahead and do part B. So part B, I write the simulate many days method. I have to use the simulate one day method. Uh, let's see. The simulation returns the number of days that so I need to return something that birds or a bear found food at the feeder. Okay, so in this method, simulate many days, I need to call simulate one day multiple times. How many times do I need to call it? Let's go ahead and look at the parameters. So simulate many days has two parameters, num birds and num days. Oh, those are the total number of days I want to simulate. So num birds, I'm just gonna write birds days. So I simulate four days, all simulated. I simulate five days, but looks like it only ran one time. No, it returns two. Okay, because on two of the five simulated, okay, so it, it still counts. Okay, and then I simulate 10 days, but it returns zero because there was no food. 
Okay, so there needs to be a condition. Let's go ahead and try this out. So it's going to be called um, public int simulate mini days. Oh, it's right here. I'll go ahead and move this. It's right here. Uh, here. All right. Public int simulate mini days. Takes in two things, int num birds, int num days, int num birds, int num, whoops, a little too close to int days. Okay, so I'm thinking out loud, while there's still food and there's still days to simulate, I want to call simulate one day. So while there's food so while current food is greater than zero and there's still days to simulate so num days is greater than zero then i want to call simulate one day uh, okay and let's go ahead and call simulate one day And simulate one day takes in a parameter called numbers. Good thing I have that. And it returns nothing, so I just call it like that. And as I call it, every time I call it, I should increment this counter variable to uh, count the number of days birds or a bear found food at the feeder. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a counter variable. I guess I could call it counter or count days. And then I'm going to increment it. Um, simulate one day will increment or it'll take away from the current food uh, inside the method. And I should also decrement num days because um, I have simulated one more day. Okay, and I think this looks about right, but I need to make sure I return an int because that's what the method expects. And the int I need to return is the count days. All right, once again, if I was trying to be very, very serious about this, I would definitely double check this code with the examples up here to make sure it worked. But I think the logic at the very least is sound. And I think I'll stop this recording part one here.